Amen. Well, it's good to be back on the radio again today. We certainly do appreciate the good Lord allowing us to be able to come to you by means of radio. This is the Bear Trail Baptist Church broadcast. I certainly am privileged to be the pastor there, Brother Tim Krantz. And we thank you so much for tuning in to our radio program uh, on a weekly base, basis. Many of you do. We thank you for that. I realize that your schedule is busy, probably like mine. And uh, there's many other things that you could be doing. But I thank you for taking time out to listen to our program. We certainly do appreciate the Lord uh, giving us this opportunity. It's always a great blessing uh, to be able to preach the word of the Lord. And I certainly am thankful that folks that listen to the program. Bear Trail Baptist Church is located at 100 Born Again Lane in Cana, Virginia. And that zip code is 24317. We do have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Our Sunday morning service is at 11 a.m. Our Sunday afternoon service is at 2 p.m. And our Wednesday night service is at 7.30. Uh, you can visit our church website, BearTrailBaptistChurch.com. There's information on the website, uh, information regarding how you can contact us if you would like. Uh, you can give us a call, send us a text message, send us some mail, send us an email. And always a blessing to hear from folks on the radio. Um, I'd like to make just a couple of announcements briefly. Uh, first of all, in regard to our youth rally, uh, the Blue Ridge Baptist Camp Meeting, we hold a youth rally there every year. It's always the last weekend in the month of June. And so on Friday night, June the 28th at 6 p.m. and then the following Saturday, the 29th at 10 a.m., we'll be having our youth rally at the Blue Ridge Baptist Camp Meeting building. Brother Tim Gammons will be preaching for us in both of those services. We'll be having a meal after each of those services as well. There'll be fun games and activities for the children, and there'll be good singing, good preaching, good fellowship, and we're excited about this meeting. We're looking forward to being there, and I certainly do hope that you'll make plans uh, to come as well. Uh, the children are certainly the ones who are uh, available or privileged to participate in the games and activities. Uh, but the adults, they enjoy the preaching and the singing and the fellowship and also the good laughs that come along with the children playing the game. So we're looking forward to the youth rally. Hope you'll make plans to be with us for that. Also, our church uh, here at the Bearshaw Baptist Church at 100 Born Again Lane in Cana, Virginia, we have VBS, our Vacation Bible School will be held this year, July the 8th through the 13th. That is a Monday through Saturday, uh, each night from 7 to 9 p.m., Monday through Friday, and then on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Brother Ben Atkins will be preaching for us uh, in the older children's and adult Sunday school class this year, and we'll also have classes for the younger children as well. And so we're looking forward to Vacation Bible School. If you are available at that time, we have classes for all ages. We'd like for you to come out and be with us for our Vacation Bible School. Well, we're going to start a brand new psalm on the broadcast today. We're going to begin in Psalm 49. May, maybe even complete the psalm in one broadcast. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. Let's pray together and we'll read the psalm and dive right in. See what the Lord has for us today from this psalm. Father, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to be able to preach your word. I pray you would help us today to be a blessing and encouragement to God's people. Pray you would use us, Lord, to say something that would strengthen and encourage them. And then, Lord, the sermon today, not necessarily primary to folks who are lost, but I pray, Lord, if someone's listening today, you would help us to say something uh, that would excite their heart, encourage them concerning the things of the Lord, maybe to give them an appetite or some curiosity in their mind to begin uh, to seek the Lord. I'm glad the Bible says if we draw nigh to him, he'd draw nigh to us. I'm glad that we serve a God that is faithful and just, that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. And Lord, for all that's accomplished today that brings honor and glory to your name, we'll certainly not fail uh, Lord, to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Psalm 49, the Bible says this, Hear this, all ye people, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. 
I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about? I'll stop reading right there for the sake of time. I'll give you a brief introduction, and we'll look at the first point in this psalm. Now, this is a very straightforward psalm, and I by no means claim to have a full, a complete understanding. I don't know that anyone has a complete understanding of every uh, passage of Scripture in the Bible. However, this psalm seems to flow with language that we can understand a little easier uh, than some of the other psalms that we have looked at or even that we will look at in the future. Now, believe it or not, the main theme of this Psalm 49 is the vanity of wealth. To my knowledge, this is the first psalm that has expounded on this topic most exclusively. Now, it has been mentioned in some of the other psalms, but it seems that this psalm is pretty much about that exclusively. Now, we are well aware of the fact that being rich or being wealthy is not a sin and it is not sinful, providing, of course, that that wealth was earned honestly and that it will be spent wisely and that it is invested faithfully in that which pleases the Lord. Now, I believe one thing that makes this a very unique psalm is the fact that the psalmist is preaching in this psalm now, it's not uncommon for the psalmist to be uh, praying, and it's not uncommon for the psalmist to be praising the Lord, uh, but it's not so often that we have the psalmist preaching, and that's what the psalmist seems to be doing here in Psalm 49. Now, this psalm, because it is primarily about a, an exclusive topic, which is the vanity of wealth, uh, it can be divided probably several different ways. However, to help with the understanding and arrangement of the psalm and to assist in providing clarity, we'll look at the psalm in three sections. First of all, we'll look at the people of the world in the first four verses. And second of all, we will look at the poverty of wealth, verses 5 through 12, and finally, we'll look at the power of the word to redeem us in verses 13 through 20. So we'll begin talking about the people of the world, and it is covered in those first four verses that I read, although I actually read five verses, but the first four verses, verse number one says, hear this, all ye people, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world. So we notice right off that everyone is encouraged to hear. Everyone is encouraged to give ear to what the psalmist is about to say. Now, the message of this psalm is not for a few select people. It's not exclusively or only for Israel or those who are practicing Judaism, etc. It is very clear from the first verse that it is for all people. Verse number two says, both low and high, rich and poor together. Now, in the first verse, when the author said all people, he meant exactly that. He meant all people. Verse number two is a verse that reinforces that statement or that fact in verse number one. In verse number one, he said, give ear all ye inhabitants of the world. And then he breaks it down. Listen, regardless of your social status, whether you be low or high, whether you be rich or poor, the psalmist is saying, give ear to what I have to say. Now, you know, the Bible says in Psalm 62, in verse number nine, the Bible says, surely men of low degree are vanity and men of high degree are a lie. So regardless of your wealth or regardless of your poverty, hear this, all ye people, is what the psalmist is saying. Look at verse number three. He said, my mouth shall speak of wisdom and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. Now, I made mention of this in the introduction. The penman in this psalm is going to be preaching, and he said, my mouth shall speak of wisdom. Now, I don't know about you, but if someone is speaking, and the thing that they are speaking is wisdom, I definitely want to hear what they have to say. I am interested in what they're trying to communicate with me 
if it has to do with wisdom. And so the psalmist said, the meditation of his heart shall be understanding. Have a couple of questions. First of all, how much time, if any time at all, do we spend meditating anymore? Listen, we are bombarded with all kinds of things and all kinds of activities and all kinds of devices, and they have seemed to cause us to um, any idea or any thought of meditation seems to have gone from the majority of people in the day that we live in. Now, number two, I would dare venture that the majority of folks who are actually meditating are not meditating on anything of value or worth understanding. So there are very few, first of all, there are very few people who actually find a quiet place to meditate upon anything anymore. And those that do, even fewer of them, are actually meditating upon something that is worthwhile. Now, number three, in the day we live, a man that is left alone with his thoughts is probably not considered a good thing. But it could be, and it would be, if our meditation of our heart would be upon the Word of God and the things of the Lord. Now, the psalmist said in verse number four of this psalm, I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the heart. Now, this verse contains a great truth for each of us to consider. We should always hear before we speak. The psalmist said, I will incline mine ear. I'm, I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to listen. I'm going to lean in that direction. I want to, I want to hear what is being said. And when I, after that I hear, I will open my dark saying. What a, what a great application for you and I. We should be swift to hear and slow to speak. And so the first four, four verses here, we see the people of the world. Now, beginning in verse number five, all the way through verse number 12, we see the poverty of wealth. You say, preacher, that's an oxymoron. I, I understand that. But oftentimes there is poverty in wealth. And we'll try to see that from these verses of scripture. Look at verse number five. It says, wherefore should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about? Now, we are definitely living in the days of evil. However, we have no reason to fear. I praise the Lord for that great truth. Amen. Now, the things in this world, all the current events, the news media, etc., all of these are bent on causing people to fear. But why should we fear. Now, this is a bit of an interesting statement. The Bible says here, when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about. Now, this is what I believe the psalmist is talking about. Even when the sins or the iniquities that are behind us, sometimes they seem to catch up with us and sometimes they even seem to surround us. Even when that is the case, we have no reason to fear. And so regardless of the situation that we're in, regardless of the circumstances that have us surrounded, if you and I will trust the Lord, there is no reason for us to fear in the evil day. Verse number six says, they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. Verse number seven None of, the, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. Now, in these two verses, we see the vanity of trusting in wealth instead of trusting in the Lord. And that's why I made this point, the poverty of wealth. You may have all that the world has to offer financially. You may have a multitude of riches, as the psalmist is making uh, uh, application here in this verse. But those wealth, that wealth and those riches, regardless of how abundant they may be, regardless of how extravagant they may be, you cannot redeem a soul with monetary gain. Amen. Now, Wealth cannot redeem and wealth cannot pay the ransom owed, but I'm glad that the Lord sure can. What a blessing. Now, let's read verses 7 and 9 together 
And then we'll go back and get verse number eight. There's a reason for this. But verse number seven says this, none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. Now, when we skip down to verse number nine, the Bible says that he should still live forever and not see corruption. And so no one and nothing but God can cause a man to live forever. No one but the Lord can cause that a man will not see corruption. Now, there's been several men over the years who have uh, done different things to have their bodies preserved in hopes that they would live again. In fact, I read when preparing this sermon some years ago that there is a company in Arizona. This company actually freezes people and they freeze them in liquid nitrogen. And they do that in hopes that in the future, doctors can bring them back to life. Now, this is a, as you can imagine, this is a a very extravagant expense. uh, This arrangement or procedure is... uh, in excess of $200,000. And this was years ago. And so there's no telling how much that is now. And so they have made an attempt. These people are making an attempt to use their wealth to preserve their life, but their soul and their spirit have already departed at the time of their death. You know, the Bible says uh, concerning the rich man in Luke chapter 16, The Bible says, and in hell, he lifted his eyes, being in torment. It says the rich man died, and in hell, he lifted his eyes, being in torment. So immediately, he was separated from God. And so, listen, you may try, you may preserve your body in liquid nitrogen, but your spirit and your soul has returned to the Lord And those that know not the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, they are going to spend eternity in eternal separation from God. They're going to go immediately to a Christless hell. They're going to be raised from that fiery grave, amen, to stand before God at the great white throne judgment. And then they're going to be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. So friend, you may have your body preserved in liquid nitrogen or some other kind of form of modern procedure, but when you die, friend, your soul leaves your body and that body is going to eventually return to corruption. The Bible says in Psalm 49 and verse number eight, for the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceases forever. And so what the, what's precious in the eyes of the Lord is the redemption of the soul. Praise the Lord that my soul has been redeemed. My soul has been saved. My spirit has been saved. And one of these days, this old body is going to be redeemed, amen. Uh, but if I were to die today, if I die tomorrow or in the future, uh, they place this body, this shell that I live in, in the grave, that thing's going to rot. It's going to corrupt. The skin worms, Job said, are going to eat my body. But I'm glad that one of these days in that resurrection morning, the Lord is going to descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. This this body, I have loved ones in the grave. My, my dad has gone on to be with the Lord. My grandmother has gone on to be with the Lord. My mother-in-law, my father-in-law, other people that are dear to me have gone on to be with the Lord. And their, their body is laying out in the grave. It is corruption. It is incorruption. But one of these days, it is going to raise incorruptible, amen, What a day that'll be. Praise the Lord for that. So my soul has been redeemed. My body's on the waiting list, amen. This is going to be redeemed. The Bible says for he, verse number 10, for he, that is speaking of the rich or the wealthy, for he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish man perish and leave their wealth to others. And so everyone dies. The wise man dies. The foolish man dies. The brutish man dies. The calm man dies. The patient man dies. The long-suffering man dies. The evil man dies. So listen, we are all going to die. You know, the Bible says this as well in Psalm 89, verse 47. 
Remember how short my time is. I tell you, it would do you and I well to remember that life is brief. The older that I get, the, the more I realize the brevity of life. It, I, I have no idea that I, how quickly it has taken me to get to the age that I am. I read this thing the other day. It's funny how that uh, everyone that's getting old is the same age as I am. And so, listen, time is very short, amen. It's going by extremely quickly. If I, if I live, if I'm privileged to live to the age of 80, which the Bible speaks of being uh, some grace given there to live to that age, I, I have a very short time left. And so life is brief. Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? Now we're in Psalm 89, verse 48 says, What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? And so, listen, my body is going to return to the dust, but my soul, friend, is going to live on forever. It has been redeemed, amen. And so after death, whatever wealth we have accumulated, it's left to others. We will carry nothing with us when we leave. Now, you may have your loved ones to place items or objects that you love in your casket with you. They may, they may close the lid on that casket and seal that thing shut. And they, they will place that casket in a, in a concrete vault and they'll seal that lid on that vault and they'll lower that thing down six feet into the ground and they'll pile dirt on top of that. But listen, friend, it doesn't matter what you think you took with you in that casket. Friend, there's nothing there but your shell. What the, the soul that lived in you lived in that shell for a while, but you've already gone to be with the Lord. You, if you're born again, the Bible says to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. And so if you're not saved, you've never been born again, you'll be separated from God at that time. And so they may bury some physical possessions with you in that casket, but they're not, they didn't go with you into eternity. They went with your body into the ground, amen. And that's so far as it goes. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, in verse number four, the Bible says, labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as the eagle toward heaven. Now, I understand that it takes money to live in this world. I'm not, I'm not naive. I understand it takes, it takes money to eat. It takes money to have clothing, raiment. It takes money to have shelter, a house, uh, to live in and a place to, it takes money to raise your family. It takes money to have transportation. It takes money to preach on the radio. It takes money to preach on the YouTube and Facebook and all. Listen, none of, none of these things are free per se. All of these things, all the equipment needed, all that. So I understand the necessity of having money. I understand of trying to uh, no, I think we ought to be good stewards of the things that God has given us. I think we ought to be wise with the money that God has given us. I think we should invest. We should save. We should have insurance. And listen, you can do whatever you want to do about all of that. I'm not here preaching that. I'm preaching the Bible, man. I think I do know we're to be wise stewards. However you believe, the Lord have you to do that. And I, I think we ought to do something to lay something up for our children, our grandchildren. But listen, Ram, regardless of the amount of wealth that you accumulate, you're either going to spend it before you die or someone else is going to spend it after you die. And so the Bible says here in this proverb that we read just a moment ago, that uh, labor not to be rich, for riches certainly make themselves wings they fly away. And so, listen, you can never, I, regardless of how, I, I guess, probably there's some people in the world that have more than they can spend. I don't know if that's the case or not. But listen, friend, all of that is going to be vanity. There's going to come a time, unless the Lord comes before them, that you develop some kind of disease in your body 
And uh, you, you, can, you can get the best doctors that there are. You can get the best medical care that's provided. And you, you may extend your life somewhat. But friend, no one lives forever here on this earth. There's a time coming when you're going to die. And it's not going to make any difference how large your bank account is. If it, you know, they make it have an extravagant viewing and, and, a, and a, an elaborate funeral and, and maybe flowers galore and a golden casket and all, all of that kind of stuff. But friend, you're, you're going back to the dust, amen. And so God help us to realize that there are some things far, far, far more important than having a bank full of money. And that's having Jesus Christ in your heart. That's knowing that your sins have been forgiven. That's knowing that the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has washed away all of your sin. And this life, friend, is just an opportunity for you and I to know the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer, that we might spend eternity for Him. See, life is temporarily as far as this earth is concerned. But one day, the Lord Jesus Christ descended from God. He descended from heaven and he came into this, into this sin cursed earth and, and he, he prepared a body for himself. And, and that body was placed into the womb of a virgin. And, and that virgin gave birth to that body that God himself indwelled. And, and he grew as a man upon this earth and, and he lived without sin and, and there was no guile found in his mouth. And he, he went about doing that, which is good. And, and he died upon the cross of Calvary for your sin. And he died on the cross of Calvary for my sin. And they placed him in a borrowed tomb. And, and the third day he arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And he done that for him to bear our sin. If we would place our faith and our trust in him, we can be saved. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You may be listening to the sound of my voice today. You may have a bank full of money. I hope you do, unless that's your God, because that God cannot get you from this life to eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, you may be so poor that the, the, the shoes on your feet, if you have them, have holes in them. You may only have one shirt, one pair of pants, and maybe don't even have the accessibility or the availability to, to take a bath on a regular basis. And, and maybe your ribs are showing and, and maybe your face has sunken in because of the lack of nutrition and you're malnourished. But friend, if you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, if you have saw yourself as a sinner and the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior, and you have received the sacrifice that he made for your sin. You may be in poverty here, but one of these days, friend, you're going to a place that the Lord Jesus Christ has prepared for those who have placed their faith and their trust in him. You're going to a place where, uh, where the street is paved with gold and where the walls are of jasper and where there's no need for the sun, but the son of God himself outshines the sun. Friend, hey, I'm talking about a grand, grand and glorious day it's going to be when we get to go with our Redeemer, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, this psalm is about the vanity of wealth. Friend, I hope if you are wealthy, what an opportunity it would be that God would allow you to have all of those worldly possessions that you may use that to get the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. You could support missionaries and you could support ministries that, that preach the Bible, teach the Bible, encourage people to know Christ, disciple those people after they know Christ so they can reach others for Christ. Amen. What a blessing to know the Lord. What a blessing to be saved. Can I just say, I thank God for every single earthly blessing that he's bestowed upon me. I told an individual the other day, I am blessed beyond measure. And I praise the Lord for all those physical blessings, all of those monetary blessings. But I magnify the Lord for the salvation of my soul and the hope of Jesus Christ that is in my heart. Amen. My time is quickly come and gone. Uh, today. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Barrettsville Baptist Church broadcast. May God richly bless you until we meet again is our humble prayer. 
All right, thank you so much for listening in on social media. I wish you would like and share the broadcast. That's the only way that we can reach more people through this avenue is with your help. It would be a tremendous pleasure and a great blessing if you would do that to help us reach more people. Certainly would thank you for that. All right, goodbye. God bless you is our prayer.